Hello everyone, hope you're all doing great and uh, welcome back uh, in another video. In this video, we are going to be creating a custom color picker uh, in Swift UI. And uh, before we go into that, uh, I just wanted to quickly share that uh, we have a new book out on Swift data, which explains uh, Swift data in detail by practical examples. So go ahead and check it out uh, when you have time at devtechie.com. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, resume the regular programming and uh, we are going to basically once again build a custom um, color picker. Now SwiftUI has made it incredibly easy for developers to create visually appealing and interactive user interfaces. Now in this video, we will explore how to build a custom color picker in SwiftUI and iOS 18. The color picker will allow user to select a pre from a predefined set of colors uh, that are visually appealing. Um, and before uh, we dive into like, you know, basically the code, I want to make sure that you have the latest uh, Xcode uh, beta if you're using. Xcode um, 16 beta 4 is what you're using, you have it installed. I've created a new file. Uh, so we have like, you know, everything uh, starting from scratch. And then we're just gonna get started. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna create a model. And this is gonna be a struct representing the color. And uh, this color model is going to be uh, conforming to identifiable protocol allowing each color to have like you know a unique id now the struct will also have a color property uh, which is going to store the color uh, for swiftui colors representing swiftui colors okay so let's go ahead and create a struct here and uh, you can actually again create this in another file i'm going to create it in this file uh, for simplicity and demo sake so we're going to name it color model we're going to conform to identifiable protocol and let's make sure to basically have it uh, uh, initialized with a UUID. We're also going to have a color property which is going to be of type color. Now since we are already defining our ID, uh, we can create this, um, uh, we can turn this uh, this property into let, uh, so it's a constant. And as soon as the value is created, uh, we don't have to worry about like you know changing that. All right. Now, uh, once we are ready, we are actually going to go create our custom view, which is going to have the color, uh, which is going to have like you know the color panel that we are creating. So we're going to create a struct uh, color panel view. And uh, this is going to conform to the view protocol. And uh, here, for now, just to remove uh, like uh, any errors from Xcode or complaints from Xcode, we're just gonna replace it with the text view. Uh, now, there are a few things we're gonna do. Uh, we can either, uh, in this color panel, uh, accept the, the set of colors uh, from the color itself uh, and that way we can actually make our control more dynamic or create predefined set of colors so if you're accepting uh, a color uh, from external um, source or from the color just create a variable and uh, populate the colors so for example var colors um, colors and then when initializing color panel view, you're gonna basically have those colors initialized. Now, in our case, we can actually just uh, uh, keep it uh, here. So well, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create a color model and just initialize it here, okay? This way uh, we have like, you know, colors defined for us uh, by default, okay? Now we're gonna simply call init and uh, let's start uh, passing some colors. So I'm gonna use orange, maybe mint. Okay. I think there's a comma missing here in it and uh, let's use 
Indigo we already got. Teal. Okay, so we have, uh, we'll take about six colors, maybe. Uh, uh, actually, let's take 10 colors, okay, for uh, five row for each. Um, like, you know, we're gonna create two rows, so that's why we're gonna take five. So, one, two, three, four, five. This is gonna be our first row, and um, then let's go ahead and take some other traditional colors, like colors that have been uh, there for a while, like red, green. Uh, let's take sign actually, that looks good. So, we have four, five, six, seven, eight, two more to go. So in it, and let's take, let's take brown. Okay, and the last one, let's take it as big, maybe yellow. Okay, all right, so we have 10 colors uh, that we are defining. Now, uh, next thing that we need to do is uh, we need a property uh, which is gonna uh, store the uh, changed color like you know whenever a user selects a color from the picker uh, we want to basically change it and this one is going to be a binding property because uh, I want to pass this uh, property from the color itself so the change is reflected on the color side okay so we're going to save our selected color and this is going to be of type color and uh, we are good to go here okay now it's time to create our view so for our view let's go ahead and call this here so we can see uh, what is happening um, okay so let's go ahead okay so let's first create a state variable straight uh, private wire and uh, this is basically going to be uh, the main selected color uh, property. So selected color, it is going to be a color. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, basically set a color. Maybe uh, let's set orange. Uh, orange is in the list. Okay. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, once we have the state property, we are simply going to call this color panel so let's create a v stack first and this v stack is going to have a text and this text is going to say hello dev techie and uh, we're gonna set the font as large title for this one and for the foreground style uh, we are going to set uh, to this selected color dot gradient uh, so essentially uh, we are um, setting the color the chosen color uh, to be the color for this uh, font okay um, all right so next uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start building our color panel view okay so what we're going to do is uh, color panel uh, actually you know what we forgot to render this so color panel view okay pass the binding for a selected uh, color and there you have it now we are ready all right so first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to create an h stack this h stack is going to host a rounded rectangle which is going to basically show the currently selected uh, color okay so basically a small rounded rectangle with that color being selected so it's going to basically act as a preview of what the color user selected color is going to look like so simply create a rounded rectangle and uh, we're going to create the corner uh, we're going to have the corner radius of uh, 20 points in this and uh, we're going to set the frame with um, width as 100 and height as 100 okay so we can have basically this uh, uh, rounded corner one. And for the foreground style, we're gonna set it as the selected color. Now we're not gonna create a gradient uh, out of this color because um, the, if we add the gradient, then it's gonna misrepresent what the color is gonna look like. We are only applying the gradient for the text view itself, okay? All right, so next, uh, underneath this uh, rounded rectangle, we are going to create within this H stack, we're gonna create a, a lazy H grid, okay? Or lazy horizontal grid. 
Now, Lazy Horizontal Grid uh, accepts uh, rows uh, as a parameter, and uh, we can create a row of uh, grid item, and there are going to be two rows that we're going to we're going to need because we have ten items, so we're going to divide five and five. So we're going to simply create a grid item. So simply array, okay, of repeating grid item count two. So it's going to create an array of two grid item rows, okay? Um, and then uh, we have our uh, our content, main content that we're going to display for this uh, lazy H grid. And in this content, we're going to simply loop over all the colors that we have, okay? And for each color, since color actually conforms to identifiable protocol, we don't have to identify or provide the ID for uh, this for each because each color is uh, identified automatically. Uh, we are gonna simply get the currently looped over or iterated uh, color and we're gonna just um, uh, create a view out of that, okay? So we're gonna create a circle. All right, and this circle is gonna have a frame with width of uh, 40 and height of uh, 40 points, okay? And for the foreground style, we are going to select the color dot color. For the opacity, actually, it bet it'll better represent if we have color model, color M. Okay, color model dot color. Okay, for the opacity, we're gonna say it's uh, 0 0.8, okay? Um, and then we are going to have a scale effect. And this is scale effect is uh, going to be uh, uh, determined based on the selected state. So if the, if the current color is uh, the selected color uh, by, we can do that by checking the selected color. If it is equal to the current, uh, the currently iterated color, in that case, we want to basically um, reduce the scale and, uh, and um, essentially like, you know, um, if these two are equal, then we're gonna make it smaller. So that'll actually represent like, you know, the selection uh, state, okay? Now we can't select right now. Uh, as you can see, like the orange is selected because that is the color that is selected here, right? But um, what we need to do is uh, we need to make this view selectable so user can select individual items. So we're gonna actually add an overlay of, um, uh, overlay of circle which is going to act as a border uh, for this and but before that let's go ahead and also add on tap gesture so we can actually see different uh, colors being uh, uh, selected and we're gonna create with animation and for the selected color we're gonna populate with the current uh, color models color okay so let's go ahead and see if we can select these so as you can see we can select and the selected color actually uh, sort of depresses down or like you know it's pressed down that way like you know we can see that uh, that particular color is selected and our color is basically reflected here uh, showing that this color is now applied on the text view itself okay now let's create an overlay which is actually gonna act as a border so uh, we're gonna simply create the circle and uh, create a stroke around the circle with the line width line width of three points and then for the foreground style uh, we are going to uh, either have basically uh, a white color or a clear color uh, overlay so if you can see right now all of these are kind of uh, white so we want to only show the border for those uh, colors that are selected okay so we can do that by setting the foreground style and we're gonna say if the selected color is equal to color m dot color in that case what we want to show is 
the white um, um, border around it otherwise just select a clear color okay now this is going to basically create this effect where we are not only like you know scaling down but uh, to accommodate the change we are actually also showing um, a border uh, so our circles look equal with the correct selection okay so now we have uh, basically our control almost ready uh, if you notice that we have like you know our control is taking a lot of space so let's go ahead and restrict how much space it can get by setting a frame property with the height uh, inside the lazy H grid so we know like you know uh, there's our two uh, rows and uh, we can actually restrict those two rows within like you know height of 100 points and that actually is going to give us a nice um, a view um, which is going to be basically 100 points height uh, showing all the colors the preview and the color panel okay now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to add some padding around this guy and uh, let's go ahead and also add a uh, background so for the background, we're gonna take uh, black color, opacity 0 0.8, and uh, we're gonna put it inside a rounded rectangle with corner radius as uh, 20 points, okay? We don't need style, so we can actually get rid of that. And uh, now let's go ahead and change this black to primary uh, color color dot primary yeah there we go okay so uh, so in in this case basically the primary color is white so it's um, not looking that great so let's go ahead and set it like you know point one and let's go ahead and try it out in the lighter um, okay there we go so this is looking a little bit uh, better um, as you can see we have like you know a nice uh, border around it let's go ahead and make it 0 0.05 so it's like just the hint of uh, just the hint of the background and uh, we should have there we go all right so this looks uh, much better and as you can see our uh, color panel is working great and uh, it can reflect all the changes in real time as we are making new selection for the colors okay so this component you can build and use with your own colors and uh, like i said uh, you can supply your own uh, set of colors by uh, providing or overriding uh, the colors so if you take a look at color panel view uh, we are basically uh, we are able to accept uh, colors and the selected color as the parameter okay so you can actually override a set of colors and provide a set of colors for your own apps theme uh, this way all right with that we have reached the end of this video thanks again for watching once again don't forget to check out devtegi.com and i'll see you guys in another video thank you